how y'all doing? My name's David, and I'm one of the techs here at Chattanooga Pinball. One of the problems we have a lot, uh, we experience a lot here, is people sending in monitors for repair. I don't know if any of you keep up with the new regulations for postage and whatnot like that, but a lot of people are starting not to carry something as big and heavy as a monitor. It's getting to the point where you actually have to send it by freight. And in a lot of cases, that's just not very cost effective. So the idea of this little short uh, video here, tutorial, is to show you how to dismount the main chassis from the monitor itself. So that's all you have to send in. Uh, very little postage involved, very little work involved. But there are some steps that you need to be cautious of, and that's why we're taking the time to pour them out here. Okay. Now, I've already dismounted this monitor from the cabinet so that you can see what's going on because if it, obviously if it were in the cabinet, you'd be all covered up. You couldn't see what I was doing up here. But this is a basic G07 monitor in some of the older games like Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, uh, games of that era. Okay? When you uh, pull everything out, you're basically going to be disconnecting the neck board and the main chassis itself. Some of the considerations are this anode here that carries a high voltage up to the tube. Okay, I'll show you how to disconnect that without getting nice little sharp surprises. Okay, you will have to disconnect the degaussing coil. You obviously have to disconnect the power from the monitor itself and you'll have to disconnect the video leads, which in this case I just have a truncated version so you can see what's going on. Okay. Make sure that everything's grounded first, which I have a lead up here that you can't see, don't really need to see, it's just grounded out. Okay, because some of these things do carry a hefty bit of voltage. Primarily this anode lead right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is, if you'll notice, I've got a screwdriver, take a long screwdriver, just take an alligator clip type jumper here, and we're going to actually connect it to the ground right here, okay? And I have it close up to the tip so that no matter how I handle it, the, the path for the electricity still bypasses me and I don't get shocked. Because when I stick this underneath this tube, Okay, these tubes are powered by anything from 18 to 35,000 volts. So what we're going to do, and you may not have heard that little click, but there was a blue spark here where we just shorted it out. And then I'm going to use the tip of the screwdriver to pry it out of the hole. If you'll notice, they're usually a double hook shape. All you have to do is squeeze one of them together far enough to get it out the side of the hole and then twist it out. Okay. Now, watch this again, and you may be able to see another one real quick. Okay, barely blue, but we're going to let that set for a few minutes. One of the things you have to watch on these old monitors is the tube isn't as well grounded as they are in the newer monitors. That charge will actually build back up after a period of time. Some of these monitors can hold a charge for as long as two weeks. So I'm just going to let that set while we're working, and before I close out, we'll touch it again and see if we can get another spark for you, okay? So that disconnects the most dangerous part, and from there it's pretty simple. We're going to disconnect the neck board next. A lot of times when you go to pull this off, there'll be a big glob of either rubber type cement or, or silicon, something like that, to hold this in place. You can see some of the stripes from the hot glue they've used here to hold these convergence rings in place, okay? If you've got a big glo uh, glob of the rubber cement there, you need to take a razor blade or something and just line across the top of this connector here so that it, it breaks that seal because you're going to pull this off and you can wiggle it a little bit around like this so to, to get it started, but you're going to pull it off as straight as possible because of these pins right here, okay? Now, coming from the tube itself is usually a ground that's connected to these they need to be disconnected. The newer monitors and these old electro homes, they simply unplug. Some of the older Wells Gardeners, they're actually soldered in place. Okay, before you send it in to us, 
you can go ahead and clip that wire right there. Just take a pair of cutters, simple pair of cutters, clip the wire. We'll put a connector on here and we'll send you the other end so that you can reconnect the tube and that's not a problem. Okay. Over here we've already disconnected the power. Okay. I'm gonna reach up here and disconnect the video. Okay. Now some of them have six pin with a nine pin split. Some of them have a straight ten pin. Where the missing one on this one would be a key. But either way, it's usually your red, blue, green, black wires running up there. No problem. Okay. The next thing would be where the yoke connects to the board itself. Okay. All you have to do is reach down. And some of these are split also. Most of them come in a, in a single package like this. Some of them are split up into pairs. And there'll be one over here and one over here. Okay. But either way, all you have to do is follow these wires down from the yoke to the connector and disconnect them. Okay. From there, we'll just wrap them up here out of the way. Then we'll reach over here. We'll grab the wires coming off of this degaussing coil, which unplug right here. On this, in this particular case, get them out of the way. Now, if you'll notice, everything is disconnected from the tube itself. Now, the only thing we have to do is dismount it. There's a screw here, and on the other side, some of them have the screws here, and there's a couple models that have a couple uh, screws from underneath. But either way, there's usually only two, and at most four to hold them on and we'll just pick up quarter inch in this case which is what most of them are we'll take the one off this side okay. and the one off this side okay. once you've done that the whole assembly will come out in one piece Okay, and this will be what you're sending us. All you have to do is put some padding here, bring this around like this, wrap it up tight like this. Okay, that's a lot cheaper to send to us. I can guarantee you we got plenty of tubes to stick it in. We'll be able to fix it, send it right back to you. The only thing you have to do is reverse those steps when you pick it in. Now, I mentioned the fact that these charged build back up after a while on these old tubes so before we close out here even though it's only been setting a few minutes okay not quite enough of a click to show but enough that you might have been able to hear it these things will build a charge back up on the old tubes and they can hold a charge for as long as two weeks so before you start working anytime before you start working on it just make sure you ground it out Okay. And that'll be it basically. That, that saves you a whole lot of time, uh, saves you a whole lot of effort. In most cases you do not have to pull this out of the cabinet to get to it. You just have to pull those pieces out. Once you have this out, send it to us. We can give you a pretty quick turnaround, plug it back in, and your game's going again. That's really all there is to it.